<laughs> no, but uh, nowadays the uh, heavyweight level is not too high, you know. So I hope oh, uh, it's going to be better heavyweights in the future. Peter, thanks for joining us. Go enjoy the rest of the show. We'll see you soon. It's the K1. Peter Rhodes, great to have him here inside the Yokohama Arena. With Mahmoud Satori out, Ariel Machado now the smallest man remaining in the tournament. Six foot even, 184 centimeters, 105 kilos, 231 pounds. Turinsky, 6'3", 191 centimeters, 242 and a half pounds, or 110 no! kilos. 42, 15 record, 12 knockouts for Turinsky. Michael Chevello, Eddie Bravo, Mike Shroudner with you. K1 rebirth, early leg kick here from Turinsky. The pole in the red gloves. The Brazilian Machado in the blue. Asking a lot of fans around Tokyo during the week and online over the last month as to their favourite for the tournament. The name Ariel Machado kept popping up over and over again. Leg kick from Machado. Let's see if Michal Turinsky can use his huge size difference. Very proud tradition of Polish fighters in K1. None more so than the Polish-Australian Paul Slowinski, who won the K1 European Grand Prix back in the day in Amsterdam when he was trained by the great four-time champion Ernesto Hust. Yeah, and just looking at these two fighters over here, Turinsky is an absolute unit. Machado's thrown a couple kicks, and they have just bounced off of his thigh. This is an absolutely deceptive-looking match. Turinsky looks massive in comparison to Machado right now. Turinsky who comes off a sensational knockout of Francis Fabrice Oriang by flying knee knockout in Nîmes, France in February in defense of his WKN Heavyweight World Championship. This big fella can get airborne. And as I said, a professional blacksmith by trade. His hands are anvils. Incredible power. What a frightening concept. This guy can fly also. Machado's got to find a way to solve the riddle of the size of Turinsky. Left hook, right hand, no power behind the right hand though from Turinsky. If there is one thing that's problematic with many Polish fighters over the years in kickboxing, they can be very stiff. We are seeing a little stiffness from Turinsky early on here, Mike. It's a very good point, yeah. And, uh, you know, clinching up a little bit, but I mean, the, the stiffness is, uh, is beliling a massive amount of power right now. I mean, this guy can generate some serious force. It's, uh, it's no joke to be in there. Uh, Machado's got his work cut out for him, but I mean, he can do it. He's got a massively uh, impressive resume over here. So again, as one of the favorites of the tournament, I'm excited for the rest of this match. Good popping left hand there from Machado, front kick from Turinsky. Turinsky incredibly relaxed in the preparation for this one. Spinning back fist, a high knee! Trying to emulate Sina Karimian, spinning back fist TKO earlier on. Front kick again from Turinsky. There's a jump in there again from the Polish fighter. As I said, very relaxed in his preparation on the bus ride over here from Tokyo this morning. He was in the seat behind me, Turinsky, asleep all the way. No signs of nervousness. Very composed. Long reaching left hand. High left roundhouse kick there from Turinsky. First round down. Put it in the books for Mikhail Turinsky. And that last shot of the round from Turinsky was so deceptive looking. My goodness, what a beautiful kick that was. Well disguised. It's crazy to see him throw this flying knee. Because you think he's just like a plodding fighter. And Ariel Machado seems like uh, he, he, a, he was starting slow and then it just kept going slow and never really picked up any steam. Machado's one of those guys, though, that sometimes takes a while to get a read on his opponent to download the information onto the hard drive. Then he processes the information, Eddie. Then he starts to unload. Hopefully, that will be the case for Machado in the second round. But this Turinsky is a big unit. Six foot three, Machado six foot even. 
Machado does come in off a win over Brazil's Lucas Paredes in Curitiba to win the WGP Kickboxing Light Heavyweight crown over a five-round decision. He's beaten Pavel Zavraliev of the Ukraine. Decision him a glory 32 in the USA. Daniel Alunga took the decision also in the USA. Had a first round KO of WBC Muay Thai World Champion Zinedine Hamil Lane. And a decision win over Michael Zuert in the Netherlands at Glory Collision 2. Did Ariel Machado. His mantelpiece also very decorated. Good left hand there from Machado to open up the second round. Yeah, and you know, just to go back to your point before, Michael, it's very interesting to watch because Terinsky is coming in there. He's very stiff. And you got to wonder if Machado is just kind of lining him up for these leg kicks. I mean, is he chopping him down? Is the, is the ideal with this to just force a long fight and just really get a lot of damage in? Machado does have the highest knockout ratio of all eight fighters in this tournament at 69% as a major part of the chin of the Brazilian. 52 and 12 record, 36 knockouts Machado. Also has a 7 and 3 mixed martial arts record. Caution there from the referee for holding on to Machado capable of some obliterating knockouts, none more so than his total annihilation of fellow Brazilian Marcelo Nunes in 2019. He absolutely cracked Nunes in just 78 seconds with a right hook to knock out Nunes. Turinski goes low, kick to the inside ankle, goes for a high left round. Hands are low on Turinski. Moves in for another knee. Machado trying to fight out of that clinch situation. Turinski's got to be careful though, Mike, not to receive it. Another warning from the referee and a point deduction for excessive holding. Yeah, there's a lot of things that these guys have to be aware of, that being first and foremost, but how about the amount of damage that's going on right now? If these guys have another fight ahead of them, another two at the best, I mean, they, they got a long, long, long day coming up. K1, very popular in Poland. I remember commentating the K1 in Watch many moons ago. Fantastic tournament from Donatus Simonetis over in Europe. And the Polish representation here, Michal Turinski lumbering forward on Ariel Machado. Machado goes in outside, thigh kick and lands. This one quarterfinal number three. The winner to take on either Valentin Portianu, the Romanian, or Xie, the Chinese giant. Already semi-final number one set between Sina Karimian of Iran and Italy's Claudio Estrate. And what happens if Sina can't go? What if he's hurt? Who, who, who takes his spot? So I believe we do have another heavyweight fight later on that could act as a reserve match. Or if there is no injury to Karim Jamai, he may be allowed back in the tournament. Outside leg kick there from Turinsky. Machado, overhand right, nicely done. Just trying for the cranium cracker on the pole. Looping left hand there from Turinsky. Loves up high and Machado. Outside leg, Turinsky, nice and high on the quadriceps. Faked the jumping knee, came over the top of the right hand. Clever there from Turinsky. Spinning back fist to a high knee to end the second stanza. Spinning back fists are on the menu today. That's the second one Turinsky's unloaded. And of course, Cena came out with the massive one earlier in the last fight. But my goodness, it seems like that will be more to come in this fight. It seemed like Machado tried to pick it up in this round, but the awkward yet powerful style of Turinsky is just like, it's it's a puzzle for him. It's hard for him to figure it out, it seems. Turinsky is very unorthodox in what he throws. You never know what's coming and from what angles. Not as if he throws the bread and butter jab to, jab to, leg kick, jab to, leg kick, hook. You just don't know what's coming. And the fact that behind whatever's coming is a massive, what is it, 243 pounds of power behind a six foot three tall frame is scary. Exactly, and you mix that in with some flying knees and some spinning back fists, and you got a recipe for disaster right there. All part of K1 Rebirth, the 30th anniversary of K1. That was born on April 13, 1993, as Peter Hurt said at Goyogi Stadium in front of 12,000 spectators when Branko Sikatik knocked out Ernesto Hust in three minutes to win the first ever K1 World Grand Prix. The late Branko Sikatik, of course. 
Left to a body shot, clinched to knee there from Terinsky. For a big fella, he's quite fast on these combinations and fast on getting on the inside. Yeah, and you know, I'm wondering also right now if Machado isn't used to a longer fight. It seems like he's been trying to chop him down, but I mean, we're deep into uh, into the, the third round already, and I don't know if it's the right strategy necessarily for this uh, this particular match. There have been successful Brazilians in the past in K1, most notably Glaube Feitosa and Francisco Filio. Both made it to the finals of the K1 World Grand Prix. Filio was beaten by Mark Hunt in 2001 at the Tokyo Dome. Semi Schilt beat Glaube Feitosa, if I remember back in 2007, I want to say. Of course, Mark Hunt, the only non European to win the K1 World Grand Prix. Left hook there from Machado, left hand from Turinsky, backs off the Brazilian, front kick from Turinsky. Checks the low kick, does Machado. Whips that left hand. But again, those leg kicks, as you said earlier, Mike, just bouncing off the lead quads of Mikhail Turinsky. <laughs> it's so incredible to watch it. It's just, it looks like it doesn't phase him, but as we know, once you go deeper in the tournament, that's going to add up. You know, the only time I ever heard a fighter describe their kicks as bouncing off another's quads was Jerome LeBanner told me that when he fought Hogman Choi, kicking the legs of Choi, who was seven foot three, 360 pounds, was like kicking a wall. The legs would just bounce straight off the thighs of Hongman Choi and had no effect. You don't see fighters like that too often. That's uh, he, he had the height, he had the, uh, the dexterity. Wow, and speaking of dexterity, Terinsky just galloping around like a ballerina. That's a game, these transitions, spinning back fist, and then he transitioned to a high kick, Terinsky. That is something you usually see from a super middleweight or a light heavyweight fighter, not from a super heavyweight like Mikhail Terinsky. So deceptive for a super heavyweight. Oh my goodness, it's, it's incredible to watch. Again, a warning for holding from Terinsky. He does not want a point deduction. Under K1 rules, push, knee, release. Two knockdowns in one round, it's all over. In the final fight, three knockdowns in one round, it's all over. No knockdown there, though. And we're in the last of it right now. This is the last 20 seconds. Machado has to make a statement because right now, I'm not seeing it. Is Terinsky going to pick himself a spot? against one of two giants, either Valentin Bordianu, who was Mike Tyson's Romanian bodyguard, or Lucien of China. Momentarily staggered Machado with a leg kick earlier there, Turinsky. Stepped through knee from the big Polish fighter. We are going to the judges. Machado pumps his fists in the air, but we believe that Turinsky has edged it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't see Machado winning this one. It just, uh, he couldn't figure out that awkward style. Wherever you're watching around the world, folks, hope you're enjoying all the action of K1 Rebirth, the 30th anniversary of K1. Let us know your thoughts online now. Give us a follow. The brand new Twitter account for K1 Worldwide is K1 underscore Rebirth. That's at K1 underscore Rebirth. K1 Rebirth Worldwide. Oh, Machado! Judge Toyonaga, Sanju Tai, Sanju Doro, Judge Okada, Sanju Tai, Sanju Doro, Ijo, Hante, Stai, We are going an extra round. Each round, I thought he was going to get it, Eddie. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But I wouldn't mind seeing another round. <laughs> I, I'm not going to complain either. Another round. This gives Machado a real golden opportunity. Being the larger of the two. Has he got the more gas in the tank than Terinsky? Either way, one of these men being dragged to deep water, having to go through to a semi-final, Mike. Exactly. It's uh, suboptimal for the game plan, I would say. If you're planning on a long Grand Prix evening, the last thing that you want is a four-rounder of your first round fight. But what do you do here? Do you come out like a thrashing machine for three minutes solid, which could burn your energy, or do you try for one big tough thumping knockout? Let's see it. I'm, I'm ready for both. I'd rather the knockout, but my goodness, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta do both, you know. You gotta win this one. Because it doesn't matter if you get burned, burned out or gassed out, you, you, you have to move forward. Eddie Bravo.
On commentary with myself, Michael Chevalo and Mike Schroudner. Extension round between Mihal Turinsky and Ariel Machado. Front kick, round kick. Front kick again from Turinsky. Big thundering left hand. Didn't turn the knuckles in though. Massive meat hooks on Turinsky. Front kick from Machado. On the outside here, the Brazilian. Turinsky. Knows he can't lock onto that holding as he was in the opening three rounds, getting cautioned a few times by the referee. Certainly don't want a point deduction in the extension route. And I think Terensky's coiled up right now. It looks like he's ready to throw a bomb. That left hand, though, of Machado snuck over the top and caught Terensky. And he drop the big man from Warsaw. So far, I haven't seen anybody with the one-punch knockout powers of Grizzly Bear. At this point, at this point, it seems like he's the heavy favorite. Oh, no doubt about it, Eddie. A crushing performance against Mahmoud Satari from Claudio Estrati in the first round. Absolutely folded him. And he'll take on Sina Karimian. The winner of this one will take on either Chinese giant Lucio or Valentin Bordianu, the Romanian giant. Inside leg kick from Machado. Outside leg from Machado. Now Machado landing some hands, scoring is Ariel Machado. Terinsky has got to be careful. He cannot take his foot off the gas here, Mike. And Machado has it. I mean, he, if he can step it up in the next minute and 20 seconds, he's got the, oh, something flew out of there. That was not good looking. There looked like some teeth flying around the ring. Beautiful stiff jab from Terinsky. Certainly had the sweat flying up the brow of Machado. Machado backing away from the big man now. Terinsky just pushes him off, creating that distance for the front kick. Step up knee from Terinsky. Strange way to block the round kick there. Almost hit his forearm into it, locked against his body. Haven't seen that before. Yeah, we're getting some serious fatigue already here. Spinning back kick from Terinsky, left hook from Machado, and another one from the Brazilian on the inside. Yeah, at this point, it seems like Machado is, is slightly ahead. And, and like you said, he, he, despite his, he just got to keep moving forward and keep throwing. And he's got it. I agree, Eddie. The boxing of Ariel Machado has come to the fore in this extension round. Liver shot there. Outside leg kick again. That leg just bounces off the lead by Turinsky. 20 seconds remains. Jab two there from Turinsky. Machado backs off momentarily. Thought Terinsky was maybe sitting for a jumping knee. Powers into a clinch, no knee though from Terinsky. Is there one last salvo left? And we go to the judges once more. Has Machado edged it? Let us know your thoughts on Twitter. Follow the official new K1 reboot account. I think Machado did barely enough to take it. That's what I think that. The boxing wasn't ready. The final round landed the punches that were scoring for Ariel Machado. Judge Okada, Judy Fine, Q. Oh, Machado! Judge Toyonaga, Judy Fine, Q. Oh, Machado! He has done it. Ariel Machado is going to have to go against Giants back to back. He advances to the semi final to take on either Luce of China or Valentin Gordiano of Romania. Two behemoths. Machado. He's boxing, winning it for him in the extension round mark. And that's a tough break for Terinsky, honestly. I mean, he was doing so well in those first three. But, you know, Machado turned it up. He got there in the last round, pointed it out, did what he needed to do. And here we go. He's in. Yeah, it seemed like uh, Terinsky did enough to get the decision initially. It was, uh, it was a iffy call at the end, but Machado took advantage of it.